What's up, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Geek, where we talk about the latest video games, movies, TV, comics, and whatever we bloody well like. I am your host, Roger Knowles, but of course, I am not on my own. I am joined by Ed from Game Hog. Epic dog is epic doge, bork bork. <laughs> hey. What the hell was that? How's it going? <laughs> It's a pleasure to be here, Roger. It's been a while since I've been on a show because I'm routinely busy, except it is a bank holiday Monday here in the UK. And I am so honoured to be here for our first show as This Week in Geek or The Week in Geek. It's just great. I'm happy with that name. I think it's catchy. I think it's exciting. Do you know who else I think is exciting? The other person who's joining us on the show. It's Luke of Luke and James Play. Say hello, Luke. <laughs> Hi there. That was a great intro, Ed. Uh, I don't Thanks, know how mate. I can follow that up, but um, I'm super excited to be here and uh, part of this brand new show. I'm not actually. No, you're not quite in shot, gonna, actually. I'm just going to. Just going to sort it out. Uh, but that's a great look for me, actually. <laughs> it's, a, it's a singular screen at the moment, but it will look better in a moment. Usually zoomed in on my face, but yes, I'm super excited. And I actually don't have much to say about any of the topics because I'm completely dense. But uh, I'm sure I'll I can. That. <laughs> I can add some sort of comedic factor there somewhere or something. <laughs> then I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, it's good to have you back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so like I said before, the, it, and Ed has just said, it's this week in Geek. The name change has happened. We've been, uh, been chatting with the lads back and forth, and Lisa, of course, back and forth on the WhatsApp group, and we were discussing about the change because over the last six months since we launched this week in gaming, we've started venturing off into new topics such as Star Wars, Game of Thrones, many other topics which obviously are not video game related. So, to be honest, to make a, the show a little bit more diverse in what we can talk about, we decided to change the name over to This Week in Geek so we don't feel as... I don't know what's the word. I uh, feel like we're betraying Restrict video games. Yeah, restricted. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to say betraying video games, but yeah, restricted is a very, very good word. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be every single week, 8 p.m. over on Facebook and Twitch. We've decided to drop I've decided to drop YouTube because we just weren't getting any views over there, weren't getting any comments. Everybody's over on Twitch or on Facebook. So we're just going to be live streaming to there. But there is a slight change in schedule. So what we're going to do is we're, every two weeks, we're going to be doing this style of show. And in between those two weeks, we're going Damn to be it. getting together and we're going to be playing a video game together. So it's going to be a new show every two weeks and then a video game show of playing whatever we want to play the other two weeks. Very straightforward. Very, Vid very easy. Video games. Sounds Plus, cracking if you ask me. Yeah, it also, video games. it means I get to play a video game. <laughs> because I've been so busy with work that now it's a perfect excuse to actually play some video games. So And I get to play it with ah, these wonderful guys. So you so. just wanted to... You just wanted to get some sweet game time in because you're far too busy. Oh, it's like, your fault. Uh, yours and Charles' fault uh, to introduce me to Dauntless, and now I'm hooked on it, and now I need to try and find I'm time. I'm sorry. To play it. I suggested a great game for people to play. I'm just glad some can listen to me for once. <laughs> Very, I'm glad. I'm happy. Well, I was listening to Charles. I'm overjoyed. I mean. <laughs> I'm actually annoyed now. I've actually angered myself. I'm angry. Don't know how to feel. I'm gonna what? sip this coke. On that note, Ed, what have you been up to since we last saw you? <laughs> I've been very busy with work, which is never fun, but, you know, pays the old bills. I've actually been back home this weekend for a little bit of a barbecue and such, and I've mostly been working at things like Summer in the City. I was hosting a lot of stages at Summer in the City, which was great fun. I actually Legend. had a lot of people be super complimentary to me, especially from the Sunday, because I did some basic panels on the Friday. I wasn't there Saturday. I had a wedding. But I did some basic panels on the Friday, which were me asking questions to panelists. Apparently, I did all right in those. I made sure I was prepared for them, which was probably the best thing that I could have done. And then <laughs> for Sunday, we had lots more fun panels. So it was me, Liam, Birdkeeper Toby, and Zeltic, who's a guy called Ed, if any of you guys have met him. He's an absolute legend. He does brilliant Zelda video essays. I love his content. Uh, I highly recommend you guys check him out. And him, like the, the lot of us were just on stage playing Mario Maker. We had an Overwatch panel with myself, Talia Marr, and G Nelson, who are <laughs> two popular female creators. And they both do some Overwatch stuff every now and again. They play Overwatch together on Xbox. And there was a problem because we were given a PS4, which they weren't used to. We had no internet and just wasn't going to work so we ended up playing mario party which was the two of them and me sort of commentating and hosting 
and that went great and we also did i hosted a poker tuba panel which everyone was a bit confused by and then that turned into a shiny hunting session for half an hour afterwards that ended with us finding a shiny in extra time that did and look that really was, cool. I got to. I saw the footage of that. So it was, fun, that did look amazing. I just I wanted to quickly say hi to everyone that's jumping in on the chat. There's quite a few people. Uh, hello, we've got hello, a few people welcome. joining us. Welcome, welcome, Smashing. welcome. Large lad Charles, Uber Kestrel, Link, Link Cable, Cable, Victor. Greetings, everyone. It's what up? With us. Hang on, wait. I probably got some soundboard stuff that we do can it. do for this. I'm do gay, it. all right? Oh, that might have been, <laughs> that might have been the wrong one. <laughs> I'm not done. Yeah, all, I'm not done. I'm not done. Uh, you take it away, Roger. The soundboard isn't going to deal with this particular silence. Well, over to uh, Luke from Luke and James Play. What have you been up to? Because last time I spoke to you, me oh, and you God. played Dauntless, which is the footage that's playing in the background now. <laughs> this is the footage from last live stream. Uh, what have you been up to since then? Since then, I have rekindled my love for Monster Hunter with Charles, uh, getting ready for the Iceborne update. So I've been doing that. I've been playing a lot of games, actually. I've also been playing a No Man's Sky, which is fantastic. And also... Revenant. I mean, no Man's Sky. Yeah, Remnant from the Ashes, which that's is it, actually Remnant. a cracking game. You've been um, rinsing that game because every yeah. time I go on Steam, you're logged into that. Yeah. So you're obviously enjoying it a lot. It's mad because I. Game? So the game, I'm just going to boil it down to what everyone likes to compare games to, which is a Dark Souls game. Um, and it's basically that with guns. Okay. And esen essentially, but it's a three player co op action sh looter shooter. Uh, third, third person perspective. Um, and it's not really looter shooters in there's just infinite amounts of coloured baubles falling down. It's actually a lot more smarter than that. Excuse okay. my language. But in essential, in it, in the point <laughs> that was that, such an ironic. I know. Moment. I'm so sorry that my language. Is, um, We're talking but about intelligence, and you said it, that it clever. I find it clever because it encourages um, co-op by the loot, as in the loot is randomly generated with the bosses so the bosses are randomly generated in people's game worlds so a person will start their game and the game and the game will uh generate it's the whole game for them so me joining ed's game could be totally different to the one i've generated and encountering different bosses there would mean me playing with ed gets me some unique gear that i would never get in my playthrough that's cool. I appreciate so it, that. So that's unique to you, Ed, but you could then also re-roll your world. You can get to a certain point and re-roll it, and then you'd have to start again. However, a lot of the parts of that world will be randomized again. So then you might get some same bits. You might get some new bits. You might fight the same boss, but get a different item from that boss, which allows you to make a unique piece of gear. And Interesting that in itself, there, yeah. yeah, that in itself means is if you join any random lobby, you are you could potentially be getting a unique piece of loot that you will never actually get anywhere else that is really cool Interesting. yeah, yeah. That does sound and the, cool. the gameplay is solid the multiplayer is solid you literally push join it finds you a game instantaneously if your friends are online you can join them as long as they're open it mm -hmm. just works there's none of this you know server stuff so i don't know if it's like you're hosted by the peer uh, you're hosted by the other player or whatever but yeah it's it's a great little surprise it's 30 quid um the game took me 12 hours to actually complete but that was a few hours. And then of me what happens it. after you complete it? Is it so like basically you, you, yeah, I'm not sure because the game they love to just put in these random little secrets and stuff. But I beat the last boss. It respawns you at the checkpoint right before the boss, and then you can you will go fight him again, or you can go back through the world and explore because obviously you've not necessarily found everything. Okay. Um, and, or you just re-roll your world and do it on a higher difficulty. There's no reason to do it on a higher difficulty at the moment, other than the challenge. But, um. The re-roll in itself is should be enough. I've Do you think it's this sort of game is going to get more updates? Extremely tempting. Mm. Pardon? Sorry, go on. Roger, who are you that? asking pardon to? Uh, I believe you go first, Ed. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it, it sounds great. I'm looking at it now. Thirty quid. Is it? It's third person, right? It's everyone's yeah. calling it a Souls like. No, is it's it a shooter it's, or is it's, it swords? It doesn't really handle like a Souls game. I mean, it's yeah. got the stamina. And it's got your chugging an Estus, but you it's a dragon heart, so those are consumables but obviously refill. Um the dodging like there's there's no blocking, so it's purely dodging and headshotting. Is it's it just you, guns? Uh there is melee. Melee's not really viable, like you can't just run through the entire game uh, meleeing. I'm not a huge fan of guns. I don't no. think guns cool. Hmm. The guns themselves are your standard weapons that you find throughout any fucking game. Okay. But the modification, so 
also what I didn't mention is you can have modifications. So not always do you find a unique weapon to the boss, which would have a unique mod that you can't actually remove. The base weapons have a, sl a modification slot that you can put random uh, different mods in, which are also randomly generated. And those change the look of the weapon and what its ability is. Mm -hmm. So the mod is like an ability, like a skill. And so that changes the look of the gun. So, but I mean, essentially they are just, you know, guns. You still shoot them. So what's uh, this uh, story you have to move on? But that's like, Sorry. that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, well, yeah. It sounds like a really I, good game. You've convinced me to get it. Essentially, that's all I've been doing, playing that No, no Man's Sky and Monster Hunter. <laughs> and you've worked as well. PS4. And yet, um, I mean, oh, can I just mention quickly, so there's something we're doing at my work which has got me really excited. I can't actually speak about it at all. It's just the fact that it's a project that they've decided to include, include me in, in the brainstorming of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited to actually be a part of that. So I've actually got like this newfound thing that I've never had this feeling for work before. Good, you've good you for know. you, man. Good so, like, one. you know, nine to five, I've got something I am excited about, which is quite cool. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah because uh, like, obviously, if you, a few months ago, you were looking for a new job, and then you've got a new yeah. job, and now you feel like this. That's awesome! Ah! Yeah, it, it, good man. I'm loving it at the moment. So, yeah, I'm, really uh, I'm going to pre. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And on that note, <laughs> before we go <laughs> any preview. further, uh, we're actually going to play a game during this live stream. And this uh, game was generated with a great mind who is actually joining us right now. His name is Ed. And he has named this game Dragon's Dev. You're cringy as fuck! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the game is basically you as the viewers have to come up with a name of a video game. Just come up with a name. And at the end anything of... Anything stupid and goofy, yeah. Anything, doesn't matter. You just come up with one. Anything. And at the end of this show, we're going to pitch you a video game, each one of us, based on the name of that video game. Does that make oh, sense? God. <laughs> oh, God. So we're we going to do... Have, we only have... Uh, I need um, help. <laughs> we only have a minute to pitch it. Mm-hmm. So in the chat, so maybe, if you could... Uh, maybe, do we make it 30 seconds? We can adjust this. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> um, we probably should have demoed the game at some point. Possibly. But hey, it's uh, a fun idea, and it's yeah. a way of basically... Basically, it gives a new reason to come to this show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because the one reason is you can come along and you can see guys like us who you know, or mm -hmm. if you don't know us, personalities that maybe you're liking or hating. I don't know what your vibe is right now. But if you're coming here and you're just getting us talking about stuff that you already know about... That's one reason to come. But now you have an extra reason to come. There's a unique game that no one else is playing. We're going to play every single show that you mm -hmm. guys can get involved in. And also, I think there's going to be an option if you guys come up with a with a name, if, if we decide on the name, if you guys come up with any fun pitches or any silly game loop ideas, we'll probably talk about those mm -hmm. as well. So feel free to throw in your silly suggestions for a game as like an elevator pitch. And we'll see. But yeah, you guys have to vote for who's done the best in the chat. Mm -hmm. And then oh at the end, we'll announce who the winner is. The or pressure we'll is announce on. it next week. We'll so see. So all you need to do in the chat is just keep putting the names down of whatever you can come up with, of a name of a game. To put it in the chat, we'll see them pop up. If you guys can keep an eye on them when I'm reading out the news pieces as well, that'd be great. Um, and we'll hopefully pick one by the end. And then we'll pitch Great. it. Um, um, sure. <laughs> Luke's like, fuck. I am fantastic. not looking forward to <laughs> But first up on the news topics, obviously pressure. it has been everywhere on <laughs> most news sites. Spider-Man is no longer in the MCU, which is bloody annoying because I finally got around to watching the latest film. <laughs> uh, bear with me just two months as I bring the Bye, news baby. article up. Just explain a little bit more about it. If oh, you here we go. Comment over on... Uh, where is it? <laughs> I've totally lost my We've had our first title to try and... We've had two titles to try and fill your time. We've had Dead, Dead Eye Night, Night from Spooky Sketches. Uh, and we've also it. had uh, Ed Templar and the Legend of Dildo Tetris. Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure I like that one, but it could... No, because it's all about Ed, discussion. and Ed doesn't need anything else world. about him. <laughs> I'm already writing his... Biography or yeah, autobiography. Exactly. Everyone I hired Luke to write my biography on my Thank behalf. Thank you, biography. Thing. I'm too lazy <laughs> to do that. <laughs> and you just shout words and phrases at me. Aren't you? Luke, and mention it. the prostitute. Ah, uh, oh, yes, the story. I, I was there for that. I paid. I paid for it. <laughs> yeah, your mum's really lovely, by the way. <laughs> She's great. <laughs> She's a great gal. I'm on a pre, dude. She's <laughs> always up for anything. On that What's note, um... suck my balls. <laughs> 
<laughs> what did they say? Do it again. No, suck my balls. <laughs> 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 Have you got any about you talking about your sack? I love it when you talk about your sack. Uh, no, just oh. so. How large <laughs> is your stream deck, by the way? Because you seem to have like many sound bites on that. That's not my stream deck. Oh, it's my no. number pad. I've ah. got, I've got nine. I've got. I'm gay. All right. Epic dog is epic. Doge bork bork. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not done. First one, I'm not done. I'm not done. That's my top row. Then C that P. A classic. Then mm -hmm. Ace Trainer yeah. Liam. <laughs> <laughs> I can spam that one. And then you're cringy as fuck. Ursula saying you're cringy as fuck. <laughs> I'm uh. I'm gonna pre. I'm gonna pre, dude. <laughs> Those are two different ones. And then no, suck my balls. <laughs> Me saying, Another classic. <laughs> I don't remember what that one was from, but there it is. Anyway, so Perfect. we're talking about D23, or no, sorry, we're not talking about the Spider Man thing. Have you yeah. got the news article ready for us? So, yeah, so um, it got obviously, it got rumored and there was information coming out that basically Sony and Disney had fallen out over the re signing of a contract for Spider Man to stay within the MCU. The current situation, what, what was with the contract, was that <laughs> Kevin Feige was the producer for each of the films that has been made. And Disney would actually pay for the films to be made and create them. Right. And Sony would uh, take the pretty much the profit from those films, but would allow Spider-Man to appear in other superhero MCU films, such as Civil War, Endgame... And things like that. Now the sorry guys, back in a moment. No problem. Uh, so the current contract, which uh, panned out for Marvel, was that they would receive five percent of the profit on the first day of release. So it's not five percent over the whole of the release, just on that first day. Now apparently it was rumored that uh, Disney came to the table with Sony and said they want fifty percent of the profit across the board. And Sony said no and walked away from the table. Now, uh, a couple of days after that, I think it was even 24 hours after that, Sony came out with a few tweets just to give their side of the story. Uh, much of today, they, they tweeted, Much of today's news about Spider-Man has mischaracterized recent discussions about Kevin Feige's involvement in the franchise. We are disappointed, but respect Disney's Sorry, decision guys. not to have him continue as lead producer uh, of our next live action Spider-Man film. We hope okay. this might change in the future, but understand that many new responsibilities that Disney has given him, including all their newly added Marvel properties, do not allow time for him to work on IP they do not own. Kevin is terrific and we are grateful for his help and guidance and appreciate the path has helped us put, uh, help put us on, which we will continue. Um, and then D23 happened, which is a big expo that Disney have. And everybody was wondering what was happening. You know, is, are they going back to the table? There's a lot of rumors going around that maybe they did actually sort this out before D23 actually happened at the weekend. But it was kind of confirmed by a couple of the actors, such as Tom Holland, that that's it. it it's uh, Spider-Man is out of the MCU. And so only you're going to take it on the run away from Disney. So that's basically the news in a nutshell. What are your guys' opinion on what's happened? What are your thoughts after, obviously, because I'm uh, Ed, you've seen the latest Spider Man? I have. Uh, Luke, have you seen the latest Spider Man? Is that the one where he goes to Europe? Yes. Yes. Then no. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. No, two, <laughs> two sides of us, someone seeing the film, someone not. Well, so. Uh, well, We'll talk about it from a non-spoiler point of view. Though. Yes, so trying to stay away from... We may talk about a couple of key features about the, that film in the post-show, so stick around for that. But currently we're just talking about the also, Sony... Also, can I mention, thing. I still yep. haven't seen Endgame. Oh, for God's sake, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, carry on. You live under a rock. I actually got... um the actually biggest caught, cinematic phenomenon I actually a caught a spoiler um, two days ago. Just inadvertently. I didn't even Snake mention it. They, Dumbledore. Yeah, there was no spoiler warning. They were just talking about the MCU thing. <laughs> and they dropped a casual little spoiler in there. Bruce Willis was a ghost the whole time. No! Oh, you got... <laughs> So, yeah, sorry, um, carry on. Sorry, carry on, guys. I'll go I'll start with you, Ed, first on this one. So, you've, obviously, you've seen the Spider-Man film. You've seen in the end game. God, say it, Luke. And <laughs> what are your opinions on the situations that happened and going forward? What's your whole thought on the whole situation? It's a bit of a shame that it's come to this. I don't imagine it's going to be a permanent situation. I imagine that we've already seen, we've discussed these topics before, but we've already seen that internet backlash is affecting things in so many ways. Sonic redid its entire thing. Things like people joining Epic Games at the moment is having massive backlashes online. Ugh. 
and people are changing as a result. I wouldn't be surprised if the massive internet hate and the fact that they left the second film on a cliffhanger mm -hmm. is pretty <laughs> detrimental. They've got to fix it for one more film, yes. at least. I thought they were only going to do one more. I mm -hmm. thought it was a trilogy. I thought they had it booked and that they were ready to do it. And I'm fairly certain that's how they had it written because I can't really spoil... I'm not going to spoil too much. In fact, I'm not going to spoil anything. <laughs> However, there's a post credit scene mm -hmm. that's vital that basically sets up the entire sequel mm -hmm. really well. And also, spoilers for the comics, not that any of you realistically care about spoilers for stories that are a decade old now. Spider-Man dies in the Ultimate Universe, getting killed by the Sinister Six, mm -hmm. who consist of there's different incarnations, but in this one, Mysterio, Vulture, Scorpion, and a couple of uh, a couple of the other ones whose names Doc Ock. Doc Ock is one. Mm -hmm. They're all Doc I'm losing Ock. them a bit, but we have the uh, we have the ability to piece a lot of them together, and they were easily setting that up as his finale and his fate. They there's a big detail in this spoiler, well, in this post credit scene that essentially makes this next film the thing that has to kill off Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And so not doing it for one more film, especially if you have that many that many people complaining about it, I think that's going to change. What do I think in terms of the situation of the companies? I think Disney were being greedy. Yes. They were being very greedy. They don't deserve 50% of the profits necessarily in those. I can understand where they were coming from. Mm -hmm. but like they... You don't get all the profits from a football transfer kind of thing, and it's that's all they were doing. They were lending it for a few films. So demanding half of the profit is not okay. Maybe 5% was too little. Apparently the recent reports from inside sources mm -hmm. say Disney actually wanted 25 or 30% split for co-financing, uh, with Sony still having 70% of all the Spidey movies. It's, it's, see, that's the thing. Like Obviously, there's different bits of information coming from left and right now I, heard, I did hear that that the idea that the offer was on the table for 25 and 30 percent but i heard that also that offer had been on the table for the last six months and sony had sat on it and not actually confirmed it and then that's why disney were like right we're stepping in with a higher number now because we've already offered you a better deal but you didn't accept it and we've got a lot more on our plate now and we've done very well with the spider-man films it's kind of oh, just before i give my opinion on it Luke, over to you. What's your thoughts, obviously, on this news coming out? And obviously, not seeing some of the latest films. Where do you stand on this? So, as a complete dense fool... <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> did... So, like, I thought... Sony owns it anyway, right? They own the film rights. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, now... Disney aren't allowed to make films now. On Spider-Man. A new Spider-Man. So isn't it the same as it is still now? No, so basically, <laughs> for example, obviously Spider-Man has been tied to the MCU. So for example, in the latest Spider-Man film, avoiding spoilers, but there is other characters from other films appear within the Spider-Man film. You've seen him in the trailer, actually, if you've watched any of the Far From Home ones, but like Happy, who is right. Iron Man's best friend, bodyguard slash driver, he's in the latest Spider-Man film. Now, with this split, he, for example, won't be in it, plus some other big characters which appear as well. Okay. And so, they can't mention anything to do with the other films as well. But you could still enjoy Spider-Man, what it is. Yeah, there's a lot of still a lot of content within Spider-Man. Obviously, the villains, the other comics, obviously, which are based around that character. Obviously, we've got the Venom film that came out uh, about a year ago now, was it? Or something like that? Uh, that I came never out. saw that, actually. Neither did I. Um, I'll be right back. No, it's, uh, I saw it, but because my missus likes Tom Hardy. Ooh. Um, but what? So, what did you think to the Venom? Then was it an okay film? Like, yeah, I thought it was great. Actually, I thought it was because it got a lot of bad um, reviews. I don't see why though. Hmm. But I can. I never seem to ever agree with bad reviews. Like, but no matter when people are like, "Oh, pretty bad," I'm like, "I don't see your <laughs> like." I don't know. So, uh, it, it's an. It is an injury. Like so I said, I can sort of see where. Ed's coming from, I can see where you're coming from. Like, like you're basically saying there isn't going to be much of a change in retrospective story. Well, yeah, because they could still... they If Sony own the... If they own the rights to Spider-Man anyway, mm -hmm. like, they can still make Spider-Man films. They mm -hmm. just can't be like, oh, 
Um, that guy who Tony Stark has as his driver, he he's not in it now. Mm -hmm. Like, what? How is that a problem? Uh, v Godlight uh, in the comments agrees with you. Venom was fucking amazing. He says, um, yeah, I thought it was good." So, so it. So basically, yes, you are. I agree. I agree. Is it like with both of you, what you're both saying? Mm. It's an interesting because like, they can walk away f now. It's just that my previous experience with Spider-Man um, with Sony has been very hit and miss. So obviously... The yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's not always been great, but... Yeah. So it, obviously, Tobey Maguire, yeah. Spider-Man 1 and 2, I quite enjoyed. They haven't aged very well, obviously, because they're quite old now. No. The third one was horrendous. Uh, Amazing yeah. Spider-Man was... Eh. And then Amazing Spider-Man Two was just the third Spider-Man has a good movie within it. Yes, they tried to do out. too much with it. Well, that's the thing. Well, the studio insisted on Venom being in it, and you mm. can tell that he just didn't give a toss. Sam Raimi just stopped caring and got angry at them for it, and so shoehorn Venom in as sort of a. Mm. That's what you get if you try and mess with my vision. We had four of these planned. Screw you. See, and I I respect that. With with the situation between the two, I'm kind of like coming at like multiple different angles. I'm thinking about it. Like one side, I'm like thinking, yeah, Disney are obviously very busy. Like for example, like it says in the tweets that even Sony admitted that they've just obtained the Fantastic Four franchise back from Fox. Same with the X Men. They've got a lot to work with, and Kevin Feige is going to have to produce all those because he's the head of it all, and he's going to be extremely busy with trying to knit all that into a cohesive story with the MCU. Now, Spider Man is only one character, one of the most popular but still only one character for them to then start putting a lot of time into which they're not going to receive any profit from hardly at all so they've got to make sure they put something on the table that is worth their time so they probably went screw it if you give us 50 percent, we'll keep going with it and obviously sony went no and they're all like okay they walked can I just away quickly ask can i just quickly ask why why sony has the right so um right i read up on this because i'm I mean, I don't even care to look up that sort of thing, but uh, no. I'm sure one of you know. So basically, I, if I remember this correctly, a long while ago, a long time ago, um, Marvel decided to sell off the rights to a lot of their franchises for films. This was before. Oh, because weren't, were they, doing really yes, weren't they, they doing weren't really bad? Yes, they were doing really bad, and well. then Iron Man hit and it did amazing. So yeah, they, but it was they sold it like a long time ago, like even before Iron right. Man and, uh, was even going to be a thing so right. they sold the hulk franchise they sold fantastic four they sold the x-men they sold spider-man and i believe they sold a couple of other ones as well and those were obviously made into i think i believe they were made into films in the 80s as well which weren't done by marvel at all and then as it's gone forward more have done it and then obviously over time then obviously uh, marvel wasn't doing very well but then it was bought by disney obviously the trillion dollar company that truly uh, that disney is basically just we're funding them and said, right, we're going to start our own film. We'll do Iron Man. That became something big. And then they just tried to reel everything back in. They got the Hulk, sort of the Hulk rights right. back. Because they, I they believe so they can't, like it's like the Monopoly. Film, they mortgaged their, they mortgaged all their properties and they were like, oh, actually, we kind of need them yeah. back now. Now, obviously, Sony <laughs> did a lot more successful, some successful films with Spider-Man. So that's why they've latched onto it and not let it go. Um, and then obviously then... Disney slash Marvel has uh, bought Fox, which means they get all their films, which obviously includes the X-Men and Fantastic Four. Right. So basically, it's kind of a here or there situation. Disney didn't want to give up more money. Dis uh, sorry, Sony didn't want to give up more money. Disney wanted more money. And Tom Holland is apparently still signed on to do at least one more film. So he's going to continue doing Spider-Man at the current stage. Uh, there's probably finer de you, down to usually what contracts are like. There's probably a lot more fine print when it comes down to him playing Spider-Man than literally that he's just doing another film. Um, there's usually a lot of different details with those, so we'll see as time goes on whether or not he will be playing Spider-Man again. But I think overall, it's extremely sad for the fans and everybody who loves superhero films. I think if they yeah, let the MCU that they've built for over a decade get destroyed by stupid shit like this, yeah, like it's it's idiocy. There's still going to be a Spider-Man film. Everyone's assuming it's going to be bad. I, I guess that's why everyone's annoyed. It's mm. going to be. They just go, oh, it's going to be shit because this person's doing it now. You are right though. That like it's so, still exactly going to be a film. The film is still going to. This is what I mean. He's contracted for one more. They're right. going to be smart and they're not going to go. Oh, I know. Let's have him appear in. Thor 4 as a flash. Mm. Don't do that. Make a movie out of him. Yeah. Do I don't. That with Spider Man. Whatever. You... What's home again? Maybe uh, Homecoming, Far From Home, 
back home again. I don't know. What would you call the? What would you call the sequel? There's a question to throw out to the chat yes, and to you. A new so home. What do you guys call <laughs> Spider-Man Three? A new home. Keeping in that Sony. home nomenclature. What would you guys do? Moving out. Yeah, we'll read them out. Yeah, moving home out. Homebreaker. Moving, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Susie Homebreaker. <laughs> Homecoming. Far from home. They make it all about Mary Jane. Laid to rest. It's not even about Spider-Man anymore. Charles says Spider-Man homeless. Uh, so Spider-Man homeless. 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 Pro Metapod was straight on that as well. Home Spider-Man wrecker. home wrecker. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Spider-Man homeboy. Homeboy. Oh. That'd be great. I'd love that. Spider-Man far from the MCU. Very oh. good link cable. Very good. That's a proper good joke. Spider-Man went and made a new home somewhere else. A new oh. web. A new web. Yeah. The World Wide Web. <laughs> Spider-Man homeless, yeah. He becomes totally digital and it turns into... <laughs> yeah. uh, but we will be talking weapon. more about Spider-Man in the post-show very briefly, because I know Ed can't really stick around too long in the post-show, but we're going to talk very, very briefly a little bit uh, spoiler talk. Um, so please stick around for that. Uh, before we go any further... Yeah, just... it's already nine. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, God. Um, quick, back it on with time. So, uh, quick reminder, obviously, we're going to be doing our game right at the end of the show. Dragon Dev, uh, put some a name of a game that you want to just make up right now in the comments. We'll pick out the best one, and then we'll pitch I've our game. I've still only got two written down, by the way, from whatever people... Okay, so, nice. like I said, <clears throat> uh, put down in the comments a name of a game that you would like yeah, to pitch. Yeah, Kestrel, I've got that written down. Uh, so speaking of Disney, D23, like I said before, is on, well, it was on last weekend, and they also spoke a little bit about Star Wars. Uh, seeing that Lisa's not here, I can talk about Star Wars as much as I like. <laughs> um, one of the things that they did obviously mention was the Obi-Wan <laughs> Star Wars series that will be coming to Disney Plus at some point in the next couple of years. Apparently the scripts are written, and they are up. Now, Ed, 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 Ed. You're cringy as fuck! <gasps> <laughs> what are your thoughts on this? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Uh, mixed. I what? don't need it. I don't need it. I'd like to see it. It'll probably add some canon material that will be quite interesting. And obviously, you and McGregor coming back for it's exciting. I don't love Obi-Wan as much as everyone else does. I don't think he needs that much fleshing out. The character that got fleshed out in... Hello there. The, Sorry. In the prequels <laughs> is a bit weak, and mm -hmm. it's really not worth a whole series. Maybe <laughs> they can do something interesting with it that ties it into the next trilogy or the old trilogy. I don't know. If they can do that with it and give me a canon reason to watch it beyond Obi-Wan doing stupid shit every week, then sure. I was more <laughs> focused at D23 about all the new announcements from the new yeah. movie. But it's still a cool... I think having an Obi-Wan series, I'm happy to see Star Wars series, but and I'm happy to support them. They are doing one thing that we did said that we that we did say that we hoped they would do that they would do these spin-off stories into a TV <laughs> a series. series. Yes, we did say this. We actually called that they would do this, and that it would be. I, do, I remember you guys saying because that because the entire impact of Rogue One to me is lost by the fact that I don't give a single shit about who <laughs> any of them are. So that always, to me, you know, messes it up. Mm -hmm. But you know. So, um, obviously, Luke, you've said before that you are a fan of Star Wars, but you say you often say that you're the world's worst Star Wars fan. Yeah, because so I cannot remember the story every time. <laughs> and you've already explained it to me, and I still can't remember. Well, and I love for it. you, sir, there is obviously a uh, series coming out on Disney Plus in the lawn when Disney Plus launches, and that is The Mandal Mandalorian, which they got a new trailer <laughs> for as well. Yeah, uh, I watched that. D23. Um, so, if, if for somebody like you who just quite haven't got the handle on the story forget about everything else just watch the mandalorian and i'm sure you will enjoy it because this trailer looked amazing yeah i mean i've always been fascinated with the bounty hunters anyway like as just just from the way they look mm -hmm. and then now they're you know flesh that shell because it is looks like a shell mm -hmm. obviously there's a human in there but now well, they're going to actually flesh it out. A real Mandalorian, though. Yeah, exactly. So obviously, he's this armor's a man. Like what you told me, Roger, was that they are warrior, a planet of warriors, aren't they? Yep. And this did the this bounty hunter steal his uh, armor or whatever? Aren't they responsible for one of the f most famous conflicts in the entire? Yes, lore? Um, the Mandalorian Wars, which yeah. um, led which to incredible. oh Malachor. 
uh, I believe, um, which was referenced in Rebels TV series, and basically, some we don't really know the full story of what happened there, but basically, um, a lot of Jedi were obliterated along with loads of Sith as well, which got frozen in status. Anyway, it's, it's, it's good story. Yikes! I know. Um, it's, uh, Star Wars is doing the thing that I really hope that. Sorry, to cut anyone off, but I really hope that um, Game of Thrones starts doing. Where you know when they just casually mention all the great things that happen back whenever, mm-hmm. like Star Wars is now doing it now, where they're like, oh, they, you know, there was this cool Mandalorian mm-hmm. back then. Now you like obviously... that they're exploring the lore. Yeah, they yeah. you know they in passing they're like, oh, this is neat battle. Now they're well, like, I'm well, excited for Lord of the Rings because Lord yeah. of the Rings is one of the richest worlds in exactly any fantasy world, and actually, arguably, the stuff in Lord of the Rings is some of the least interesting. Mm-hmm. There's some really cool bigger things at play than destroying the source of an angel there's like the creation of sauron and the yeah. finding of the istari or the sending of the istari from the void into the world of men and all the things they did or people like ungoliant who's our um Shelob's mother things like that who ate light she literally eats light and <laughs> there's so many cool plots you could do like with Mel- melkor Mm. Um, uh, Morgoth. Morgoth. Yep. Morgoth was the Dark Lord, uh, who was Sauron's master, and he oh, tricked shit. her. Really? He tricked Ungoliant into stealing three of the Silmarils, who, which are basically pure light crystals, and it, with the promise that she'd be allowed to eat them. And he took them and you put them in a crown to use for ruling and for power. And basically kept her, like forced her into a spider form and made her live in a giant crevice where no light could ever touch it. <laughs> it's like, why can't I see this in a series? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's well, really right. cool. Like you said, like this is like you both say, like the idea of this is telling more interesting stories that you're seeing a different side to Star Wars. It's not this epic battle between good and evil, it's someone who's down on the ground living the life of Star Wars, but it's then going to show you different aspects of certain things, like other stories that have been told. Yeah. What what happened after Return of the Jedi? Well, it shows you in the first clip, the Stormtroopers' helmets are on spikes. This is, yeah. it, basically, this is set within a situation that the core world, so the centre of the galaxy, is okay. Because, uh, because basically, the New Republic have taken over, but they can only look after the core worlds at this moment in time. The external planets on the outside of the galaxy, the outer rim, are in utter to turmoil and it's basically the strongest survives and there is different um groups of um imperials left and then obviously the bounty hunter aspect is still very strong but the the um the new uh, republic are trying to are trying the best to step into the outer rim as much as they can and this is going to be the story which is going to tell that but from a different point of view which is obviously a Quote from Obi Wan Kenobi. Always good. What, do you know what planet they are flying? At? You know when you qu- briefly see a little shot of a ship flying over that looks like a really big salt, like mm-hmm. a dried up lake flat. or a salt uh, flat. Is that like um, like the Mandalorian planet or something? Or is I that, don't know. Do you know. I do know that really... wasn't Mandalor uh, Mandalor uh, Mandalor planet was, was it a swampy place? It was quite rich in life at one time, but then was destroyed. Was destroyed. Yeah. yeah, it was baked over. So it could very well be uh, that planet that we see him flying over. We don't know. Uh, I hope they visit some new planets. I hope they don't just go uh, to stereotypical desert planet. Um, yeah. Oh, we're now in a Tatooine. forest planet. It's like, you know, I just don't know. Some, some interesting no locations, cities and stuff like that would be really cool. What Tatooine's not the f- uh, desert one, is it? it? Is, yes. the... Tatooine is, yeah. Oh, it is. Right, cool. What's the foresty one? Endor. Uh, Endor. Endor. Yep. That's a Yavin. Oh, I can have some. Oh, then there's Yavin, yeah. Where Yavin. The where the, what's the one where the Ewoks live? That's uh, Endor. That's Endor. Ah, cool. All right, that's what I thought. Nice, no worries. Carry on. <laughs> I do know something. <laughs> you do, you know lots of things, Luke. Don't do worry. I just can't remember. I just can't recall them. That's the. Also, we got really cool footage, a new teaser trailer from some of the behind the scenes stuff of the new film that featured yes. at the end of the trailer. Oh, so I'm completely oblivious to this. Right. Stuff. So Please. for everybody who we're going to put our hands in the air right now. So this is the spoiler warning. We're actually going to mention the trailer and the footage that was shown for to um, promote the latest film of Rise of Skywalker. So there is some Ooh. footage that is shown that if you don't want anything going into this film, you don't want anything spoiled, then just maybe mute the stream until we lower our hands. 
So the <laughs> footage shows off uh, early footage of the original films and a few quotations, very nicely edited together, which moves over onto the prequels and go uh, through on that. And then it starts showing... I found that bit all super boring. I was oh, like, I loved what it. is this cack? I was just like, show me cack. more shit. I want to see new no, shit. I, I, it kind of got me. I was like, I was getting a bit emotional. I was like, no, the good old days. Um, <laughs> and then it shows you some footage from the original, which shows you uh, Ray fighting Kylo, which looks like on a wreckage of some sort within the sea which i'm guessing maybe the death star um and then you see actually a lightning bolt go across the space of some sort which then shows a fleet of original like this is where i get really geeky um phase one star destroyers okay so these oh. are from the new hope star Wa uh, star wars film this did slightly change when they went into empire strikes back and return of the jedi so these are phase one star destroyers from the original film but there is hundreds of them all lined up like as if they're waiting for something which yeah with a really cool silhouette effect that they're yeah at the moment. i've got to have my hands up sorry um and then the final scene it shows ray wearing a dark hood two blades of a lightsaber get lit and then it flicks to a double-bladed lightsaber get and lit. it's red nunchuck red she uses like nunchucks <laughs> so, so cool. um yeah it's got to be fake though it's got to be a force vision because obviously palpatine is back in this mm -hmm. uh, which i'm imagining as a force ghost there's no way in hell he survived absolutely not and if they did that's bullshit mm -hmm. bullshit yeah, um it does look like the cave that, she, that that she's in does look very similar to the cave on dagobah where yoda is where luke sees darth vader and chops his head off it does look very similar to that where he has very that true. force Excuse vision me. But the one thing I said to you, actually, Ed, before we went live, was that it could be a clone. It could be a clone. It could be. And, and that's an interesting theory to explore, because I don't know if it is. But it would make sense, because you had a little tidbit. Of yeah. So in The Last Jedi, when uh, Rey's on the island with Luke, and she's exploring different areas, like the light area of the planet, and then she finds this hole, which is the essence of the dark side, and she falls into it. And she took, yes. touches like this mirror wall, which is really weird. And then it actually, she has like a bit of a vision where it almost duplicates herself, and there's like hundreds of her all lined up. And why? Sorry, why is there just like a random place on this planet with a dark place and random place? With... Uh, yeah, the why... force is everywhere. Yeah, Luke. and it's always in balance. So it's always the, the always the light and the dark. So and... is it just because she can see it, or is it like no, this is there. everywhere? Like... Um, when there's f strong, f when there's wherever there's a, a location with strong light, there is always an, a location nearby with strong dark. Oh, okay, got you. To create a balance within the location. Um, got you. So I don't know how it works on Dagobah. We should where probably you're... stop the spoilers soon. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. So I've got my hands up. Do not. Anyway. Uh, so anyway. So that's my theory: is that she possibly is a clone. And Ray well, there we was. Go. It was exciting right. footage. Yes. I'm so down for this movie. We have got to wait for a trailer. If I have hands back down. Oh, okay. down. Oh. <laughs> It was very exciting to see the new footage. We must now wait for a full-on trailer because I don't think we've had a proper one. We had a teaser of a trailer where does it that it... count? Yeah. I suppose it does. Yeah, it's it footage. Was... It's footage. It's the same thing, isn't it? But mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm super excited. I'm getting tickets for the midnight of this one. I have to. The, the last fact one. That the Knights of Ren are involved. There is also a it. comic coming out based entirely on the Knights of Ren, so it might be. I was going to say, are they going to do some stuff about them? Probably yeah. So like, when that gets released, I'll, I'll make ping you over sick. and. We'll have a little time about do, on the stream. They're my favorite element of Star Wars. I've, I think they're so cool and enigmatic. So I want to see how they deal with that. But it's been, it's, it's, I'm excited for it. You because know? it's this week in Geek, we can now talk about comics as well. So if we do actually read a exactly. Star Wars comic, we will let you know what we think to it as well. Oh, can we talk about it. anime then as well? We can talk, we can, talk, we can, we we can, can indeed. Anything, mate. anything geeky? Talk about anime. Yeah. However, we must now bring the topics of discussion to a close, but that doesn't mean that the show's over, because for those of you who have been paying attention from the beginning of the show, we have ourselves a brand new game, a pitching game that you guys are going to help us with by giving us a title of a game. That the three of us are going to have maybe 30 seconds to a minute to pitch an idea on the spot for a game. And you guys have to vote for who the winner is. And maybe we get a vote as well. We haven't figured that bit out yet. <laughs> just still find a detail. But what's this game out. called, Roger? It is called Dragon's Dev. So over in the comments, if you want to quickly put in a name right now, for whatever game you want to come up I've with. Got, we've got a name in there that could work. Well, we have two right now. Mm -hmm. We have Dodo Quest 1681. 
<laughs> or we have Dead Eye Knights. I, I think, think Dead I've... Eye Knights is actually the name of Spooky Sketch's game, so I think he's just trying to <laughs> finger us a little bit here with a subtle promotion. The Dildo I... Chronicles. Stop talking about dildos. <laughs> Ed, see that you are the you are the you are the mind behind this game. You were the one who mentioned it and came up with this game. I think you should be the one who chooses the first name of this game. Okay, well I'll see if anyone else writes one over the next ten seconds. Well, I want to talk about dildo, says Charles. Okay, we're not going to get anything that's not dildo. <laughs> go really, to a different Charles. stream. <laughs> so we're probably going to have to go with Dodo Quest. Dodo sounds similar to. That's probably fine. You can just deal with it like that. So we're gonna. Would you? Would you rather have talked about? I I kind of thought up a little something for the Dead Eye Knights in my head, but I don't Did know. You? Yeah. Well, why but don't like... we? Okay. Well, why don't we do that then as a subtle promotion for Spooky Sketches game? I didn't know that. Well, so we'll do I Dead Eye Knights. Different... <laughs> we'll do Dead Eye Knights because actually I've got an idea for Dead Eye Knights. Picture this. <laughs> I would like a game set in total darkness. You are dead. And have no eyes, and it is night time. <laughs> My <laughs> intention is to use sonar to figure out where you are, and then maybe text boxes will come up and tell you some stuff. Do you know a game like that already exists? They're, yeah, but not like this. Not like this. <laughs> She's just blind. She's not blind, dead, and at night. There's no light <laughs> in any regard. And basically, it if it was day or no, what it? we've got with this is you're going to have to move around using purely audio. You walk around with WASD and maybe a mouse, and you try and interact with stuff somehow. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work, but you use purely audio to interact. Oh, oh my God. And then you, you figure out a puzzle based purely on audio because you're deaf, not deaf, because you're blind, and it's nighttime, and it's dark, and <laughs> you're dead. So there's Dead Eye Nights. Luke, what's your game? No, sorry, can I just say quickly that what you've just described is an actual game. <laughs> like, like you you are, it's an audio only game. Me and James actually did a video on it. Okay. Bloody hell, you made that quick. <laughs> it actually exists. Right, anyway. Um, so, <laughs> my Dead Eye Nights game is you are one of few members of a cult following of John Marsden called, uh, the cult's called Dead Eye Nights. And because John Marsden used the Dead Eye skill, he you have gained a band, new band of followers, and are going around terrorising people in not the old West, but modern day. Oh, okay. And did they go through some kind of portal? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 they just call themselves the Dead Eye. Could do. Yeah, okay, yeah. I like the idea of that. So basically, Red Dead Redemption, but in it's modern Red day, Dead Redemption Dead Three. Eye Nights. Yeah, okay. and it's cool. Like that. Nights. And what about you, Roger? What's your What's your suggestion? Right, mine's That's a four-player co-op game, and you are all knights oh. set in medieval times. But the world has gone dead. Everybody is turned into zombies. However, zombies. weirdly, Dark Souls. weirdly, only th one of you out of the four can actually see for thirty seconds, and then it swaps to the other person. Now, there are waves of zombies coming in, and you must not only fight the zombies that the person can see, but you must direct the others to be able to know where they can swing and hit. This and is a really good idea. <laughs> That's fantastic. And there is also friendly fire. So if you swing and oh, hit a, fr a friendly, they will lose body parts. This is a really strong idea, and it swaps, so you have yep. to work together. Yep. Yeah. Every 30 seconds like it moves to another that. player. Okay, so, I mean, admittedly, we would like to normally have a bit more of a chat and a bit of banter, <laughs> but we have almost essentially decided that Rogers is the yeah. winner there, Elvis purely on the mechanics. I can imagine that being really fun. I'd actually so, play yeah, that. I'd be a game I'd play. You have, you have my money. If we're copying Dragon's Den, I'm in. I'm in. I'm absolutely I'll in. I'll give you game. 50 grand for... 99% of your company. <laughs> <laughs> Done! <laughs> Sold! <laughs> Can I get an advance? <laughs> I quite like the idea of Luke's one as well, though, in a way. But I basically what you described is something like Watch Dogs Legion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's very true, actually. Spooky is going to totally steal that idea, by the way. He's free to. <laughs> Spooky, I didn't explain it very if well. If you make that, credit this show and let <laughs> us play it on the show. Let me just uh, <laughs> take down notes. <laughs> take that idea. He's stolen it. Oh, I'll give you 50p and some sugar-free Maryland cookies for 10% share in this game. Fuck that. Fuck that. I'll take it. 
I think that was a really, really good pitch, actually, good Roger. One. A four-player co-op game straight kind of reminds me of the idea of something like Darksiders 4, which I'm super excited for, by the way. <laughs> Have you seen Darksiders 4, Luke? No, I heard you mention it. Sorry, Have you I'll ever played you... Darksiders? Yep, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so you'd love 4, then. It's Magicka, yeah. but with Darksiders. Great. I'm dead. Yeah, sounds great. I played all the other ones. You don't need to sell it to me. I love Darksiders. Mate, we're going to play the heck out of that. The oh, living and heck, the, the people that heck. made Remnant from the Ashes made Dark. Oh, yeah. I, I, one of my friends were mentioning Ma about that. Made Darksiders. Yeah. Did they? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. But I mentioning so. video games, obviously there has been a slight change to scheduling now. So the new show that you are seeing right now will be back in two weeks' time. But that doesn't mean you won't see us next week. We will be back next Monday oh, at 8 no. p.m. over on Facebook and Twitch. But we will be playing a video game, hopefully with as many <laughs> of us as possible. Uh, we still have to decide which video game we're going to play. We still need to arrange our... Wow, classic. Wow, classic. <laughs> wow, classic. Wait, Wait a minute, is it... Wow. Is it? It'd be interesting. Classic. It would be interesting to start that, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. That would be actually quite funny to... It goes ago. live in... Uh, One hour and 30 minutes? An, An hour MMO, and though, would minutes. take, like, so Plus. long to play. Luke, please come and play it with me. And Roger as well. I feel like Roger's less difficult to convince on this. <laughs> and as it's Ra WoW Classic, your computer should... Do Yes, it, it should be able it, to run it. I hope they don't sort of do <laughs> some bad optimizing or something like Can that. Can we just say, for everyone who's in the chat, could you let us know right now if you are going to be logging on tonight to play WoW people Classic? Minecraft. Try and convince these two boys to also come and play because it would be great fun to all be able to go on this adventure together, but all starting at the same place. None of this boosting your character bollocks. No one instantly being level 60 by the time you arrive. You're all going to be at the same ready. I'm just going to uh, say download WoW. Charles watch says this. he's going to be there. He's got his Atlas ready. He says, Roger, Luke, come play. Um, I wrong. watched, annoyingly, I watched an IGN video that kind of helped sort of sell it to me a little bit. And he was like saying how it's about the journey to dungeons. Which actually oh, is, yeah, mate. Because you've actually got to get stuff. there. It's yeah. no, none of this like instant None of this travel. bollocks. You know, none of the um, conveniences now that MMOs have where you can just queue up for a dungeon anywhere. You know, all that sort of They've so, gone back to, you know, the way it was before. Yeah. Uber Kestrel just mentioned something actually in the chat. I said, I will be, but in another server, unfortunately. Now, are the different servers to choose which one you want to go into? Absolutely. So there's right. normal servers, which mm -hmm. are just basically you versus the environment, and you can agree to dueling against other players, but they're in controlled environments. There's PvP, which is what it sounds like. There's obviously the two alliances. There's Alliance and Horde. Mm -hmm. and whichever one of them you're on, you can attack players with the other thing without challenging them to duel. So that's quite a fun mechanic. Right, so and everybody follow GameHub Games if you haven't uh, already. Ed, you tweet what server you're on and everything like that and what's going to happen. I don't know yet, but I'm going yeah, to. Yeah, tweet, so... tweet it out once you know. And then if everybody yeah. follows and checks it out, then we can all jump into the same server and make sure we're on the right side of everything. And then we know what we're doing and we're ready for next week. Oh, I'm excited. It's going to be great. I'm going to be play? playing all night tonight. You have to pay for a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then you, yeah, you can cancel. I can handle a month. whole month. I believe. Yeah, I will. What month. level should I get Sucks to, by the way, D. by next week, just so then we're ready? <laughs> I thought we were going to start. Are we not starting? No, don't start. That's boring. You want to, you want to crack on and get just get going. Okay. We'll get. We'll start doing. I think the first dungeons level twelve. Okay. If we aren't, we will all be in different areas, won't we? We don't. Have Technically, yeah. yeah. So that's one another reason you want to start grinding now. It's like because people do this with games like Rust. Did you go? I'm going to play Rust with my mates. We've all spawned on the other side of a map with no way of getting to each other. Oh, uh, it's a pain. Oh, shit. Yeah. So that will be next week okay. over on Facebook and Twitch. Always Games TV. We'll be playing WoW Classic. Done. Um, 8 p.m. Uh, we'll be back. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. We'll be talking obviously about Spider-Man, Star Wars. Great talking about everything geeky related. Ed. Luke, you're absolute stars. We're going to jump straight into the post show now. We've gone a little bit longer than we initially thought we would be, but thank you so, so much for joining. Don't forget to follow us if you're watching over on Twitch, follow us or like us on Facebook if you're watching over there. Head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe as well. Follow these guys over on Ed, uh, Ed Game Hog Games. <laughs> I totally said that wrong. Um, follow Luke, obviously, over at Luke and James Plays as well. And That's right. Check all their streams out and amazing stuff. And yeah, we will see you all next week playing WoW Classic. We're about to jump into the post show. If you're watching live, don't go anywhere. If you're listening over on our podcast services, 
which will eventually be uploaded too. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you're watching over on YouTube for the edited show, thank you so much <laughs> I for watching. Ed Game Hog. <laughs> and Ed Game Hog. Ed Game Hog. <laughs> and we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Bye bye.